Hey guys, it's Elena. So if you didn't already know, it's prom season. We all love prom season. And I wanted to do something a little bit special and a little bit different. So I wanted to make a prom dress out of things that I found from the thrift store. So I found some special little gems and I turned it into a cute, very prom like pink dress. So I'm going to show you everything that I did and hopefully it inspires you to do something just like it. Okay, so here is an example of one of the little canopy things that I got. Uh, excuse the dorky picture. I could not think of a better way to show it, but it was so much fabric. It was ridiculous. And uh, also peep the branch that got <laughs> stuck and tangled up in it from the parking lot. I realized like as I was walking out the door of Goodwill that it was like dragging on the concrete. So kind of awkward. I probably looked crazy because I literally had three of these. So like I was wandering around Goodwill just looking for inspo, you know? And I look over, I'm in the linen section, and I see this like pink mass, and I was like, oh my gosh, what is that? And I realized it was these three canopies, and I was like, yep, I don't know what I'm going to do with this, but I need to buy it. So basically, I took out the top metal ring, and I cut it from being in a circle form into just like being flat. And this is how much fabric it was. It was absurd. Like this is one canopy, like that's the length of one. And I was like trying to figure out how long it was. And so I was like laying next to it to try to like see how long it was. <laughs> I think it was like 20 feet of fabric. So yeah, I started off by gathering and in typical Elena fashion, mm. I uh, mm. ran out of bobbin mm. at the most inconvenient time like I was probably two-thirds of the way through this like 20 foot long piece of fabric and um, yeah I ran out of bobbin please um, don't do that and think ahead of time and have like a super full bobbin if you ever attempt to do something like this um, but yeah you're basically going to just gather along the top and I basically am doing two layers of fabric at a time. So I'm going along the top and gathering it. I have a video on this if you want more detail. Um, and as I was going through, I, I literally did it twice. I literally ran out of bobbin thread twice. Um, you know, some people just don't learn from their mistakes, but learn from mine. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so here I'm just going through and gathering it. it like I said, it was so much fabric. Um, but you're going to basically do this several times. So what I did was I gathered at the top, laid it down on top of my skirt lining, which you'll see in a second, and then cut it because there was so much extra length and then made like a whole extra second layer. But here's a sheet that I got from Goodwill. I think it was like $2. I just cut out the stretchy elastic because this was a fitted sheet that I found. So I just cut out the elastic and kind of evened it out so it'd be more of a rectangle. And then I just did two basting stitches along the top to gather it as well. And it was plenty of fabric for me. I think this was like only a twin and it was totally fine. It would have been nice to have more fabric and a bigger sheet, but this worked okay. So I went ahead and gathered this just like I did the other things. And I gathered it enough so that it would be the same length as my waist. Once I was done with that and the length of the skirt was a little bit longer than I wanted, I, you know, like you always want local room, I started laying down my pieces of tulle. And as you can see here, there's so much extra tulle. So that's kind of where I got the idea to cut off the bottom. But I'm basically just getting the width 
am at that waist to be kind of similar. I'm pinning it and then I'm just cutting a couple inches longer so I have a little bit of wiggle room to use and I, I mean there could be like a more efficient more exact way to do this but I just hacksawed my way through <laughs> and I did the same thing all over again with that bottom piece and here's what it's looking like I've got like 20 million layers of tool here so many yards of fabric it's ridiculous and I'm just pinning it to the same lining and attaching it all with each other with just like a normal straight stitch so that it's all secure none of it's gonna be going anywhere or shrinking or coming loose or anything like that so the skirt is basically done and i am moving along to the top so i was going to try to make a bodice out of the lining but I just really didn't like it. And so I bought some cheap fabric from Joann's that was like a good color match. And I wanted to do a princess bodice. So if I'm being honest, this bodice kind of like kicked my butt. I'm not gonna lie. Um, I spent a long time getting it to fit me well and it worked but i just like i also kept making so many mistakes Ugh. but basically you have a front piece and then two side pieces and then same thing for the back you have your center panels and then you have two side panels and it's at a curve so it can accentuate your body and then you're just going to kind of sew along the curve and at all times and all stages you want to be kind of like putting it up to yourself to make sure that it fits well but I would say another really really important piece to this is ironing so make sure that you're pressing your seams and that everything's going the right direction and in typical bodice fashion you're gonna take your front pieces and put it together your back pieces and um, as you can see here I'm putting together my back pieces I have so many because I'm doing a lining and I realized that I did all of my back pieces as a right back piece. I I literally sewed two of them wrong. So uh, I had to unpick them and redo them. Once I did, I finally pinned them on correctly and then I just went ahead and sewed along the shoulder seams and the side seams and you're going to do all of this process twice because the fabric that I chose was a little bit thin and see-through I wanted to have a lining and also I thought that would make it look and feel a little bit more professional and then here is an example of how I am kind of fitting it better to myself. So I ended up taking it in a little bit at the waist, but then the armholes were like way too small. So I just kind of trimmed in the armhole and did something similar on all of them. You can also take it in at the bust or the waist or the shoulders. There's lots of places you can take it in if it's a little bit too big or not quite fitting right. But once you feel really good about the bodice, you can move on to the sleeves. So you're just going to do a long basting stitch along the top of the shoulder and gather just a tiny so that there's like a little baby puff. I am a sucker for puff sleeves if you haven't seen any of my other videos. <laughs> and then you're just going to pin the sleeve to the bodice. And usually what I like to do is I like to have them both right sides out and then I match up the bottom of the sleeve and the side seam of the bodice. And I kind of nest those and then I flip the shoulder over and then like I finish pinning all the way around. And that seems to work for me. I always, always suggest that you just kind of flip everything right side out to make sure that you've done things correctly because I've messed that up many times and I'm just realizing that it's always better to be safe than sorry. So always double check your work before you start sewing anything. And then once you are done with the bodice, 
I realized that the bottom of mine was like super uneven and crooked. So I just went and evened all of that out. And I wanted to also take in the back a little bit because now it is time to put the bodice pieces together. So like I said earlier, I have a normal outer bodice piece and then I have a lining. In my case, the fabric is the exact same, so it doesn't really matter which one goes on the outside. Pick whichever one you messed up less in my case. And then I'm just sewing all along the back, the sides, and the neck. Basically all of the raw edges. You're going to sew it around. And it's also very important to snip along any curves, especially around the neck. If you don't do this, it won't sit right. So that's very important. And once you flip it around, it should look really, really crisp and clean. If yours isn't quite laying right, you can always do a top stitch. Mine wasn't very necessary, and so I didn't. And then I went ahead and moved on to finish the sleeves. So I just did a normal double folded hem. I folded mine up about a half to three quarters of an inch twice and sewed all the way around. You could do yours smaller or longer or trim it first. You, there's a lot of different ways that you can do it, but this is just how I went ahead and did mine and I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. So to finally finish the skirt, I just went ahead and trimmed everything one last time. I had to give this thing a haircut, like no joke, a hundred times because it was always kind of a little crooked, so I would just kind of like stand it up, shake it out, put it back down, and you just kind of gotta like rinse and repeat a couple times. And eventually you'll finally get it. At this point, it's also really important to make sure that everything is straight and even before you start putting things together. I found that if I am cutting both of those things to be straight and even and really crisp and clean, then you're much more likely to get a straight line. So I made sure that my skirt was super clean looking before I pinned that onto my bodice. And I only pinned it to the outside of my bodice and then I just did a whip stitch to connect the lining to the skirt. And it looked really nice and professional and kept all that ugly waist enclosed. And so once I had done that, I went ahead and did a double folded hem on the skirt. And after that, you're on to the very last step, which is to attach your invisible zipper. And this is always a little bit hard and challenging with long dresses like this, but I have a video on this to go through everything. So do not fear, I got you there. And here she is, the finished dress, and oh my gosh, I love how this came out. I'll be honest, in the beginning, it wasn't looking too good, but I love how it came out. I think it is so pretty, and it really just goes to show that you can really make anything into something beautiful. I hope you guys loved this video, and I will see you in the next one.